or if you want to do both, uh, or if you want to do both, um, we are going to, well, those with the technical skills, thank you, Nathan, thank you, Walt, <laughs> are going to upload it, download it, or some kind of load it, and put it in the trunk, and then uh, package it up real good, and email it to all the city councilors, to all of the um, um, planning commissioners, because, you know, just in case they have to remember this again they'll have it you know they can go back and hear your voice sometimes hearing a voice and hearing your cry or your plea or your concern in in your voice is more better than an email um and we're also going to send it to the planning department heads uh, uh city manager marshall adams david um, and uh, who else do we have on the list that I said we were going to send it to? Uh, oh, night, um, attorney, um, the attorney for car, care car, um, as well, so that you know, if he needs it for any type of litigation or anything, um, you know, this here that you know they heard from the people again. So, um, and oh, most importantly, we are going to also send it to the clerk of court, the city of Raleigh uh, currently does not have a clerk of court. You all should be very concerned that the mayor of Raleigh, I mean, the mm, city manager of Raleigh is acting um, as an, um, well, filling in her shoes or, or their shoes um, as the city manager they're being a fill-in um, um, we'll talk about that at another time but um, you all should be really concerned most times when a person leaves a big you know major city as such they can get a temp worker or they or Gail who was there I know she trained up all the people in there uh, because I've worked with them um, yeah, you need to be known why they have the city manager working as the clerk too. She's working a nine to five and on as a clerk, city clerk, and as the um city manager sound a little trumpet to trump. Okay. So before I get started, I want to let Walt speak. And if Nathan wants to say anything, please do so. But um, you know. And I'll please know that technology may go in and out, but luckily we have um, three people here. And the, and the, it's going to go like, you have your three minutes, we have a time up. Now, I, I don't have a gavel, no need. We, you know, we, we want to be respectful of everyone's time. And, um, but if you go three seconds over, it's not, you know, it's, Get your sentence out. If you know you got five more words in your sentence, complete your five more words, please. But if you know you got 50 more words in your sentence, please type all of that in the comments and they can read it still. And also, if you would like um, in the comments, put your information, email address and all that for the city councilors to reach out to you or whatever, however you want to do. This is up to you. Um, we don't want to put too many strings on it, but I just want you to know it's for you, the community. Um, and it's also for the um, city councilors who want to hear from you and those who want to be heard. Okay, well, I'll speak up. Is Wall here? Um, Wall might not be um here right now since. Oh, Wall um, might have had my Wall said he had to leave on out for a second. Okay, Nathan, would you like to say anything before we move on? Um, I do have a few things to say, mostly logistic. Um, if okay, um, if people um would prefer, I can disable um the audible alarm that goes off. It's pretty quiet. So it shouldn't be too intrusive if people are fishing up, uh, finishing up, but I can disable that if people prefer. I will. I I please. Um, it's no disrespect to anyone, and I don't want to be seem like oh, let's be kind. None of that. It just it helped me stay on track because I'm actually using my phone, and I so I can't use a timer. So if you all don't mind, we're not being disrespectful. Like I said, if you want to go over, you got five more words, whatever. 
I'm not going to, I'm willing to be here to midnight. I don't have anything pressing like that tonight. But thank you for that, Nathan. Anything else? Any more housekeeping? Um, I think that's it. I'll try and let people in um, and respond to people as they raise their hand. Um, yes, yes, yes. And this, and, and I'm going to say too, that this is for people who are against the development, redevelopment, rezoning um, at Shaw University. Uh, if you are halfway on the fence, this call is not for you. If you are for it, um, they have, Shaw has, excuse me, Shaw um, conducts their own calls on their own dimes, pennies, or whatever they use. We are conducting these calls on our own Wi-Fi and uh, whatever thing, you know, coin, coinages. And I should put my cash app in here if anybody wants to donate. But anyway, um, we do this on our own dime. We do. We are not a nonprofit. Most of most people know that, but we do this because we have been touched by the injustice. So we are here to um, help others. Um, but, okay, so I'm going to start. Um, well, let me ask, um, though, um, um, Nathan, are we live on Facebook or are we just going to put it on Facebook later? This is not live. It's being reported to cloud, though, so it can be up. Okay, well, later. guess what? They'll have to see it later because I, hey, technology is technology. And again, it's not even about all that. Um, okay, so um, see. Um, um, oh, thank you, Jenny Hopper. And that is who I'm going to go with, Jenny from the block. <laughs> Come on, hey, Jenny everybody. from the block. Thanks so much for having us tonight. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, I really had not prepared a statement, um, but right. I have, but I, I have gotten up many times and spoken about this issue. Um, and I'll say something similar that I have said other times, which is that I think everyone here loves Shaw very deeply and loves what it stands for very deeply. Um, and we want to see it thrive and we want to see it grow. We want to see it be around for another 150 years, but that um, benefit should not come from scrambling over the backs of the history, nor the people who built it, um, nor on the backs of the history and the people who built the neighborhoods and the communities that surround it. Um, these, of course, are the people who literally built Raleigh. Um, you can't talk about Shaw's significance without talking about all the historic neighborhoods that are born out of the university's success. And, that um, is most certainly true for Prince Hall, which is the city's first local historic district that was dedicated to Raleigh's Black history. Um, the designation just happened in 2012. That came nearly 50 years or 40 years after Oakwood was designated and 30 years after Boylan Heights. Um, it took the city a crazy long time to get there. But even though we have that designation, Prince Hall still is not safe. Um, a lot of the parcels in question as part of Shaw's rezoning are in Prince Hall. And um, Prince Hall has already experienced several um, attempts to dismantle it by removing parcels. And if this goes through, it is really going to be the death knell for this district. Um, you know, it's going to open up the floodgates for speculative development. And, you know, one of the things that's really concerning to me is that the city says that they care about Black history. But I think what we're seeing here is that if um, it stands in the way of developers or political aspirations that someone might have or um, their ability to fundraise, that at that point, um, you know, there really is not a line in the sand that would protect these resources that are precious, they are dwindling and they are irreplaceable. Um, I'm also really concerned for um, the East Raleigh South Park, what is the National Historic District there, both because there really is not as much left, but um, it really has this, a concentration of some of the city's last naturally occurring affordable housing. Um, the neighborhood's already been diminished from demolitions that happened during the city's redevelopment policies during the 90s and early 2000. And of course, gentrification has been a big issue there. 
Um, but if it is, in, and it is directly adjacent to some of their Shaw's aspirations for 30 story class A towers. And I'm really concerned that if that goes through without any type of consideration for what that means for those neighborhoods that we're talking about a mass displacement. Um, you know, these are people, as you all know, that are filled with property owners and residents. There's tenants there. Um, some of them have been there for decades. Some of them are newcomers and they will be forcibly removed because there is just absolutely no way that that naturally occurring affordable housing can exist, coexist next to a series of 30 story class A towers. Um, you know, I'm a history person. I am very into the lessons that history teaches us. Mm -hmm. And you know, that historic built environment, there is just so much to learn from it. Um, I talk a lot about Oakwood. Oakwood likes to tell a story about how they were saved or how they advocated and had the belt line back in the 1970s thwarted from being constructed, which would have um, you know, demolished it. But what you don't usually hear tell is that that same belt line would have come through South Park and Prince Hall and East Raleigh. And that, you know, um, that effort to save Oakwood, it really spurred a lot of private investment happening that happened there subsequently. And now it's the neighborhood that it is today. But, you know, on this side of town, um, you know, there was just really dogged urban renewal that just absolutely devastated it. Um, you know, it absolutely hollowed out these proud, long established black neighborhoods. It fully eradicated Fourth Ward and all the, the housing and neighborhoods and communities that were along Martin Luther King Jr. And so now we're looking at Shaw's leaders, um, you know, who are, you know, goaded on and cheered along, I'm sure, by the development community who are looking at doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this rezoning as it stands now would finish off what's left. And I, I really, really hope that that's not where we are as a city. Um, I, I hope not too, Jenny. And what this is, I mean, as you know, we've been out here doing this work before we had a name. Um, I follow you, your work. Um, and but this will continue um, either whether we're fighting against the injustices or we're fighting for community benefits. So this is just the beginning, but I, I, I know I broke my own rules from the, from the first person, but this is just, this really set the tone of, and having some history from whoever's listening on ideal of what's, uh, uh, yeah, let it be organic, um, of what's going on. I want to know, did you um, see or uh, find out what happened um, at the um, planning commission around Prince Hall? I did. It was uh, okay. you know, really surprising um, that this was, is this this past week that you're asking about? Yes, if you can uh, let people know. I sure can. So Prince Thank Hall you. is a really tiny local historic district. You know, really the only way to preserve, you know, buildings, with any meaningful in many meaningful ways at the local level. And that's through a local historic district or as a local landmark. That means that exterior changes or demolitions that goes before the Raleigh Historic Development Commission, they approve plans for that. And it really kind of guides what the future, you know, development is in a, in a particular area as it relates to a historic overlay district. A historic overlay district is a con collection of buildings and parcels. So you may have historic buildings, you may have ones that were built more recently and they're not, and you may have vacant lots interspersed in there. When the district was created in 2012, uh, the boundaries in this particular parcel you're talking about, it extends up to where the Prince Hall Masonic building is, which is on the corner of um, South Blunt and East Cabrera Street. That is of course what the historic district is named after or named for. Directly adjacent on, to that on Blunt Street, there is a small vacant parcel that's been used as a parking lot for years and years, it used to have a single family house on it. A developer purchased that lot for three quarters of a million dollars. Um, said they did not realize that it was located in a historic district. Um, we've heard some differing um, information about that, but irregardless, they are seeking to have a the a twelve story hotel built there. They have promised the Masons at Prince Hall that they are going to help you know fix up their building. Their intention, I believe, is to have some access to their hotel project that takes you through the Masonic Lodge. But ultimately what they want to do is to remove that historic 
boundary that goes around that lot. And that's what Shaw is seeking to do with their rezoning. And there have been a couple of other um, examples that have happened uh, 2015 and then also last year. So it has been before the planning commission and a fairly, you know, uh, um, there was a lot of conversation about it back in March, but they deferred their decision to RHDC to weigh in on it. Um, and then it came back before the planning commission um, this past week. And we were, really surprised and very um, happy to say that it was it was defeated. It was denied six to two. That, of course, is not a binding vote. Ultimately, it will go on to city council. Um, we know that ultimately there is an effort to dis to de-designate Prince Hall as a historic district um, that is being led, I believe, to some degree at the council table. And uh, the issue of whether or not Prince Hall um, will ex continue to exist is up in the air and it's gonna be, um, there's gonna be a lot of discussion about it over the next few months. And I believe that city council is going to be tying a resurvey of whether or not people still want it to exist is gonna be tied together with this rezoning request, which is to be taken out of Prince Hall for this hotel. And I will say there are vacant lots in Prince Hall. There used to be a lot of density here. You know, basically if anyone walks around this part of downtown, they see vacant lots. They should know at one point there was all sorts of life and business and residences and activity that was happening on what everybody just thinks are, are parking lots. Um, and, and adding some infill back into those places is a wonderful thing, but it should not come at the expense of sacrificing this precious irreplaceable history. Um, so. Yes, definitely, definitely. I totally agree. Um, I remember coming to Raleigh years and years ago, even as a child before I moved here, and um, having uncles that were members of the Masonic Lodge, and it's like, they went there and we went to Belts. <laughs> <laughs> went to Bells downtown. My auntie said, they're going there and we're going to Bells. But, and I was like, okay, this must be, and it, my uncle sometimes would dress up and I just knew it had to be something different. But as you said, there were lots of black businesses around for certain. I don't remember empty spaces around. Um, there were lots of um, other people we visited before we even, they, by that time they had moved to uh, Palo Heights, but at one time they stayed in Chavis. So we st stopped and visited people along the way from downtown and it just seemed so far, but it really wasn't because of the, you know, the stops and the visits, but it's very necessary. Um, you know, they want to take these things out of high school and, and replace them in various and, and, and put other things in its places. But um, but yet then we hear people wonder who they are, where they come from and a lot of confusion in that. But I remember when Nicole Stewart was still city councilor, she was like, well, you know, all they just need is a is a statue or just need a some type of symbol to remember that it was there. Um, they people don't actually have to be there. And I've been to St. Louis and I've seen those empty um empty buildings. They're bringing them back now. Um um, and I also was saw where they tore down all those brick built houses to put up um, that major freeway. Mm -hmm. um, so I think all these things come in a circle. Um, and we, you know, and you know, there was Ella Baker that went to Shaw that helped start at Smith, and it's like that really gets me. Oh, well, how dare they do this? considering the the legacy she left um and uh, i appreciate you as an ally having uh, your work and your history and everything that you know and i wish more we had more allies that did know this we have one, another person on the phone jeremy who's going to speak in a minute or it might be red his wife but um I wish we had more concern and understanding that no one is trying to take anything away. We're just trying to have respect for what, you know, what we had. And I was reading the old Freedman, um, what are they called? The Freedman, when they first met, the Freedman Convention. That's right. um, and so that's why I said, this is going to be a continuation. Because I feel like if people know that 
Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, you did a story on that. What Brooklyn um, Heights was Brooklyn, which was a black community. Mm-hmm. Freeman, right? That's right. Um, and then there's Hungry Net, and the only thing left in Hungry Net is like a big old architectural, different looking houses, and it's like where did those people go? But now we're asking the same thing. Where did the people in College Park that was displaced, pushed out? Where did the people from um, Roberts Park area and all those people that's been pushed out, where are they? Where did they go? We're, we're asking the same thing. And now they're at Heritage Park uh, wanting to so-called revitalize and do mixed income over there. So, um, and also we can look at other places, but I'm going to say this right here and you can stay on if you like because it doesn't seem like others are coming i don't know i really had a problem logging on i don't know what if others are um so maybe they'll reach out by message message they can't with me because my phone is on do not disturb but hopefully someone else will figure out what's going on because i know some other people that were going to be on the call that really had some things to say but um I did an um, interview with WKNC, and I had um, what I explained to them is that, you know, we're seeing what's happening in Florida and Texas um, and, you know, the, 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 the power struggle uh, the, the, where the, in Tennessee where they try to silence the Tennessee three there. But I have been explaining to people for the past four years at least, well, three and a half, however long she, Mary Ann Bauer has been there. These things have already happened. It's like the first, her first week or so in an office it was to silence us of what we can and not say. Now, it's, you know, your size, the signs, the size of your signs. And even though, um, you know, our governor, thankfully, isn't doing it. And these things may be happening on the, at the legislative building. But I w- want people, when they hear this call, to know and be aware. What you see on TV, like, oh my God, I cannot believe that it's happening in Florida with that governor. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that it's happening in Texas with that governor. Oh, I can't believe my ex-president is doing that. I cannot believe that the um, legislators of North Carolina are doing this to us. Well, apparently you're not really paying attention to what's happening with the city of Raleigh and their <laughs> leadership as in the mayor and a few that's on council. I'm grateful for the new four we have. We have a long way to go, but I feel like, I really feel like this is the time to do it. And again, I'm just grateful to um, be in this space with you all. This has given me more energy and thoughts of all different type of classes and trainings and workshops and more Zooms. I don't care if it's two people on the Zoom, especially if it's recorded and it's something that can be held in, in history or um, that somebody can go back and listen to. That's good enough for me. So I am going to move on to, I don't know if I have the, uh, if I, I have the Fabulous Couple or Jeremy in red, but I'm not sure if I have both or if I have one. So you all choose any, mini money, Mo. Uh, it's both of us here, but I guess um, uh, one thing, that, yeah, speaking of the new four, I'm just wondering why there was a unanimous vote for the city budget. Uh, including raising money for police, but that's uh, another issue. But um, yeah, I mean, just I, I the way I'm seeing this too is that um, they should be voting against this on moral grounds based on um, what people at Shaw have told me about the corruption of the administration there. That's agree. That that's the reason this is happening. That that sold out to these. Uh, white developers you know they sold off the radio station closed the mosque and all that and seem to be uh you know uh and so I, some of them are saying they're outright pocketing a lot of money out of this and uh neglecting the school and neglecting the students so um that alone should raise serious questions for the council to approve this uh in my book and then uh if if all of that is true or at least it needs to be looked at in more detail um and then obviously on the gentrification issue, um, 
obviously it looks like around the Bragg Street area to me that they've already pretty much have taken that over with a few exceptions. That's that area is gone as far as uh, gentrification goes. And then the uh, you you mentioned uh, areas further east and then northeast. Seems like it's all kind of closing in around Shaw to me, uh, in a sense. And then, of course, they want to build downtown south. Um, so uh, there's those observations are what I'm seeing. And obviously, removing the Prince Hall historic designation is uh, obviously a blatant um, move uh, there that's uh, really disturbing to me. Um, and we were at that um, demonstration here this past weekend. Uh, where that was talked about as well. Um, it was another disturbing thing to me was that the turnout was was a lot lower than I than I expected it would have been. Um, but uh, that's I guess I don't know all the reasons for that. But um, so I don't know. If I, obviously, we're a small group of people that really deeply pay attention to all this, and I guess most of the city doesn't. And of course, there's a lot of uh, now gentrifiers that live here, so uh, they're happy with it. But um, yeah, um, those are my thoughts off the bat. I wasn't really preparing to speak tonight, but uh, I was to listen. But anyway, that's uh, I'll let uh, you want to say anything. Or... Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Red. I was born and raised in Raleigh. Um, um, I'm my my a bunch of my family. We we have a we went to Saint Aug, so <laughs> it's it's um. So I definitely know that area is next, obviously, you know, so just kind of that whole part of, of Raleigh downtown, just where the HBCUs are. But um, my father was a Prince Hall, well, is a Prince Hall Mason. So he did a lot of his pledging and stuff in that historic district. So that historic district is important to him. Um, also, I went to a historically Black church where many of the members went to um, Shaw University, um, went to the Divinity School there. So it was a very important, it was always an important school for, for our church and just for, you know, just downtown Raleigh as a whole. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of history there, both good and bad. So I grew up listening to the radio station that was sold. Um, my dad would listen to it every day. So it was definitely a childhood staple, very nostalgic. Um, it was really sad to see it go, despite a lot of the alumni wanting to buy it and not get rid of it. So obviously that's the internal politics there. But uh, yeah, I did, like Jeremy said, we went to the uh, Save Our Shaw rally uh, Saturday and um Definitely wish there had been more people there. I just think that just how, with how transient the city of Raleigh is, it's just so many people that are not native. I hate to use the word native, but aren't like, well, I'll just say native for a better word. So I think there's just so many transplants in Raleigh now. So I think like some of the historic areas, it's like they're starting to to lose some of their, I don't know, I'm not lose their importance, but I think people just don't, there's a lot of people coming right. that just don't really, that aren't aware, that have no idea, you know what I mean, that this is, that's, that's there, and there's so much important history there, and so they're just moving, and they're, they're, they're like, oh yes, we're going to get a new, a new district, they're going to rezone it, all this and that, so that, I just don't think there's a lot of awareness of, of Shaw and the importance, you know, by a lot of folks, and you know, people are benefiting anyway from it getting developed so so yeah those are my thoughts as somebody that's just grown up here and just seen so many dramatic changes in my lifetime and they'll probably get mm -hmm. to say on next yep well <laughs> let, let me let me let me say this from being some, um, someone who follows a lot of this work when you say saying all that they, they, they're already doing things over there saying all and um you know um there were certain opportunities that People felt like St. All should have been afford, could have been afforded. Um, and there were there's still back and forth when it comes to trustee boards and things. I want to say this from a real honest, um, um, authentic um place. From hearing what other people say in um the community. Uh, now, I will say, I am really, really, truly, a lot of people don't know how vested I am personally, financially, for family members that have been there, family members that are still going, um, and uh, as far as the Divinity School, staying out as well. Um, uh, 
is um and so it's not that I'm detached from in any of it, but I'm also one of these people that have to think of um how how to strategy how to strategize the the strategy around what is as actually going on. And the, you, there's been the narrative of when it comes to the political side of it, that of the internal conflicts and issues of what's happening at Shaw. And Shaw doesn't have money and all these things. I've been hearing that for umpteen plus years. But let me say this too. I've been hearing that about saying no. I have family members who work that state. Yes. My point is almost every school, uh, St. Mary's almost won't hear for a minute, you know, until some people came in um, and helped it. Mayor, I saw where the president, president of Shaw went on and said what the endowment of mayor, the mayor this endowment was. It was not correct, but it's actually more than what she said. Um, so I went and I did the history of Meredith Endowment and who gave it. There's a list of who gave that money. Huh. So, um, I suggest she will re reach out to those family members that may be still around. Some of those have very prominent names in Raleigh. They may want to help. But my point is, every school, college, university, and a lot of time businesses as, as well, have some type of internal conflict that the powers that be or the laws that rule them, that rule the city or the government or such, um, don't have any power over those like private institutions or such, unless it's like an EOC type of situation. So, and if we just want to look at it as the, oh, these are the internal things, well, all of us would never leave Wake County public school systems because they always have issues internally, lunchroom money, missing all kind of things that are happening in the school system. There have been people who come to City Raleigh and in my past 15 plus years of going there and start talking about they have issues with the Wake County school system then they have been directed by many people um, well, Mary Ann is the only one that's still there now, but ones who are no longer there and will say that, hey, you, I've heard Corey and then, and then I've even heard people that are, you know, that are in office now, like Christina had to tell someone, that's a Wake County public school system issue. We, they don't have any jurisdiction over those matters. So what we have to focus on is where we can put our power. Now, if we align ourselves strategically and make sure that those schools are not um, um, gentrified, um and the and the, those those that capitalistic money greed um uh colonialism mentality uh doesn't go we it doesn't have the opportunity to go in and take over because we didn't let them uh, um um rezone it then maybe there will and this is what I told the people that started the Save Our Show when they first started I said that. I can see that making some um, um, dominoes fall because when they can't get what they want, somebody's going to have to shift. Somebody who's not doing the work, whether it's the president or somebody on the trustee board, some things are going to have to move. So we have to look at those things that in, in, in that manner because that, honestly, as a taxpayer, um, my role, my way of coming at them would have been through federal and Pell Grant because that's my taxpayer money. And I would want to know how it's being spent and not wait for a city rezoning issue to deal with it. So we can talk for years and years on this, but there's a whole lot of other things that people don't are not taking in consideration when they just want to talk about the internal issues. My goal is to save or take back the black land um and keep and help pe 
fight for democracy and liberation and eventually reparations from the things that have been stolen. Keep these historical things here and we live in harmony like we have, well, I can't say it. Hey, some people have not lived in harmony. Let me take that back. I digress from that. That's not always true. But we will maybe not be as contentious as we are now and maybe be able to trust the leadership we have in city council and state government, federal government, and things might be a little different like that. But there's a whole lot of history and there's a whole lot of other things than a just simple, oh, oh, it's a moral thing. I Now you start talking about maybe some religious things that you don't want people to start making um ch the voting on based on their morals because your morals compared to mine might not be what you want so let's look at these laws if we don't like these laws let's change them let's put the right people in office this time around let's flip the whole seven so um i am going to let um gino speak and then from Gino, I'm going to see if anyone else wants to speak. And then we're going to have Rosa. But after Gino speaks, we're going to see if anybody has anything. Or does anyone want to have anything to say about what I just said? Let me be fair about that. Before we go to you, Gino. Anything? Well, as Gino is coming on, introducing Gino to the G, to the E, to the N, to the O, um... Prince Hall, that area is very important to me as well because that is where uh, many organizations such as Food Not Bombs and Meals to the Masses and other individual people and ORs and are feeding those who are being um, unseen people or pretending they don't see, should I say. Um, and that's where their needs are being met. That's very important to me um, that that remains, especially since they... Um, um, shut down the Salvation Army for no reason, the same lies they try to use on the mosque. So, yeah, that, that makes a difference. We all matter uh, uh, as far as, um, as economic, there's no economic value or social class because you're unhoused don't mean you're less than the classes in a class system way. Yes, you know, I thought you might be off speaker by now. Let me help you. Ooh. Nathan, you better do that. Something went wrong with my phone. Gino, you need help? Let's see if we can help Gino. Or did Gino type something and say, leave me alone? I'm just here to listen. Nope. Let's see if we can get Gino off of mute. Gino still is Gino still here? Is Gino a real person? <laughs> Am I seeing? And Gino. Can you hear? Can you put something in the chat? If you can hear us, at least we know that we have you here. Well, while we wait on Gino, try to figure out, hopefully, you know, we don't have an AI here. We introducing some to some. Many know already. I'm grateful for her work, even though I haven't seen her for a little bit of time. But I know she's out here doing wonderful, fabulous, great things and helping our community, helping the world, including Puerto Rico. Um, Gino M. Left. Y'all, that might have been a bot or, you know, not a bot, but, you know, somebody, you know what I mean, just was here. I was wondering about that. Kind of my gut kind of felt that. Way. Um, but anyway, we are received. Rosa already knows she's off of mute already. And so 
um miss rosa i can't say your last name good because um um I didn't get my mouth. I need something to drink. But you can say your name and introduce yourself. And before you start talking about Shaw and we're in the, the uh, Worthdale and all the areas that you were so familiar with in Southeast Raleigh, just to give us a little background of what you're doing and then move into our area, into our world. Well, I've been in Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Puerto Rico um, two months at a time and uh doing about three months of work in those two months at a time so what um, type of work mm -hmm. but, um, i work with um i got two things going on one is uh climatizing seeds uh and the other one is i work with um small farmers and specifically women farmers and um trying to get access to resources that they should have access to um and uh, so I was really, um, I was really happy I was able to join tonight because I am a Shaw, I'm a graduate of Shaw. And oh, um, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm an old grad, like I, I graduated as an old lady. I graduated in 2009 when I was, hey. when I was 49. Um, but, you know, it was a concern at that time, you know, you think 2009, 2010, the writing was on the wall and now we're reading it. It's, it's, it's written on the wall now. Um, but um, it's, it's, uh, somebody said something about um, St. Aug and like you said, uh, Wanda, it's, it, that's a done deal over there. I don't, I don't know if it's a done deal in the Shaw area, you would think because of what's going on on Bragg Street, but um, I just was hoping to, you know, hear more about what's what's happening. And I do think that Heritage Park, because of its proximity to Shaw, that was part of chipping away, you know, chipping away, trying to um, get the ground ready. And now they're going in for the kill. And it's just, it's very, um, it's very um, disturbing to me. So mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. what I can, I know what I can do and what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I'm telling, you know, as far as a, as far as a, a university access to higher education is important for everybody. I went, I started a graduate and I, and and Hua, I know you're over there at NC State, but it was a whole other world for people who are not white to be over at at um, NC State. And there's got to be places where you can have access to education, access to a higher education, and you don't have to deal with that. And that, this was at the graduate level, hearing people say things like, "Oh, um, discrimination—that's just a crutch that people use." And I'm talking about graduate level courses. It's not mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so I mean, mm -hmm. the land in, is an important thing. The the history is an important thing. That's why I went there. I I, I went to Shaw because, you know, the history. I had I had worked in Tennessee, with the Highlander Center on you know what was known as the Civil Rights Training Training School, and um. You know, it was important that it's not just history. It's not just it's the past. You can't just put a plaque up. I can't believe somebody would say that. You just need to have some. It's it's not a museum. It's a living. It's a living thing. And and you know, until there is a time where we don't actually need places like that, which is not now, you know, then uh, then we have to. Um, protect not just the space for the history but for the space for the for the opportunity and the and 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 the the ability for people to not be minimized in a in an mm -hmm. academic setting mm -hmm. and i i mean i i i saw that um I saw that at Shaw uh, and I, I went to um, 
started at uh, NC State for graduate school and also went to University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana for a research thing. And I'm telling you, the, 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 there was a world of difference, a world of difference. People know what is being talked about as it relates to the real world um, and what it, you know, what, what, what the implications are for people of color at a place like Shaw, at a place like NC Central as well. I've been to workshops and stuff there and um, you, you don't have to have the burden of having to bring everybody else along into, into what the realities are. Uh, people already know it. So, so I don't know what, I, I really just uh, wanna be able to find out, you know, what's going on, what the coalition is doing and what I can do uh, to support that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, the set that you're into for me, and I know uh, that you have helped a, and worked with a lot of the black former, farmers in the area and throughout the state of North Carolina and the migrant and immigrant farmers. And, uh, and because of that, I, I want to lift this that um, people, I think you probably know, but a lot of people, and I'm sure Jenny knows, a lot of people may not know that Shaw actually has a farm out off of, um, uh, what's the road? Pool Road. Rock Quarry, no, Rock Quarry Road, down Rock Quarry. I have, I have a great idea that where it could benefit the whole community, benefit the uh, disenfranchised, marginalized. Um, if they were really, truly hurting for money doing before COVID and even after COVID, there was money and there is still money for black farmers or to help black farmers to get back in in a, in a in a situation where they can help produce um uh produce a uh, some type of a seed or a vegetable or fruit or something uh, to put on the table some type of food supply um and if you drive out there um you need your lights and um, all that kind of stuff. I suggest you go during the daytime. It looks bad. It's terrible. It's a disgrace um, that that God has given you this beautiful space to grow. Um, it has grown before, so more than likely it can still grow. Um, the things that are in um, hemp, which is something people are using now, plantain pillings, mm -hmm. um, things like that, that can be used. It's been a lost opportunity and potential for over 10 plus years that nothing has been happening. They're so focused on downtown. But when you're part of the downtown Raleigh, downtown Raleigh uh, Alliance, and you see they're like, they have the mafia set up where like um say if you go to a restaurant and the taxes are 7.5 percent or whatever you bought or whatever um in that particular district you're out on glenwood and you buy the um beer and whatever or, or um on hillsborough street and you get some of that delicious um um Oh, I can't even think the Mediterranean food. I food. I'm not gonna say the restaurant. I don't want to. A lot of the food is good over there, anyway. And um, and uh, you pay the taxes. Well, these districts, these business district, municipal, social business district, keep up to a certain percentage, uh, somewhere around two point seven percent, um, to help sustain their districts. Well, Downtown Raleigh Alliance says that they use that money um, during COVID to help people. Well, okay, we had, thank God we, you know, the, the remnants of it still here. But what were y'all doing with the money before? Other than the ambassador program where you were using it to hire people to throw people out from downtown um, doing events and such. So, um, 
there is a major discrepancy, a major issue when you want to talk about budget, Jeremy. Oh, that's a different subject. We can have a whole totally zoom on it. But you want to know where we're being fleeced at. You get people that they don't even put their notes up on the um, uh, uh, members and what happened in the meetings on their website. If you want it, they want you to come ask for it. Well, you uh, look, I gave you my money. You didn't come and ask me for my money. You got my tax money. So oh, you should just put it up on the page if it's public information, which it is. Um. Same. There's there there's a district for the black market. Um, Johnny Hay Hay Hunt Haggett. He has his own district. How you have a district when you have one store? Um. So Shaw want that's what really was the thing that was bringing Shaw into this. Um, wanting to be part of um this social district, which was a slap into a slap of of the community's face if anything you it, the, it, you should be called it should be called Shaw University and community um based on the legacy and the um hi, um history when the work that ancestors and the elders have done and uh, um alumni and uh, um students and such um that's what you, but you want to be called this district. So when you get this Jamaican restaurant that, um, that, um, uh, ex Senator, uh, uh, Yvonne Hawley suggested would go great there. So, uh, 2.7 percent off of the receipt would date the social district shaw district would get to keep and they would have a board i wonder would the board look like the trustee board i don't know and so those are the things why um i, I was so grateful the four city count new city councilors are saying we want some assurance or, or that you meet with city counts that you meet with the community I don't know if y'all know the first community stakeholder meetings they had. It was for the um, status quo in a cl certain class of people. I was not invited. Uh, apparently, I did not have the proper or something up or something to attend. But I do know who was there. Um, and so those uh, people, some of those people... I know lived in a whole totally different county, way, 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 way. Maybe they went to Shaw or something. I don't know. But um, community stakeholders, they got to choose. They were private meetings, and then they moved to something public um, or in some kind of way. But when you're not telling the truth, transparency is the thing, especially another thing what they have not said in the master plan there's a difference between a rezoning request plan or rezoning request or in a redevelopment plan or request. When you call something a redevelopment plan, you get transfer hall. Transfer hall is not what transfer hall was promised to the black community. Totally another subject we'll talk about another day. But that's where a lot of that, where that gentrification started um, with that project as well. And with redevelopment, you get access to see, now I always get the community in, investment funding, community something, I always get the initials, the, the CBDG or CDBG, I always get it mixed up. Okay, I apologize for that, but I do know there's some free grant money. It's free tax money that they're getting, whether you want to call it LMNOP. It's free tax money it's on a federal level, city level, and um, uh, state level where they can go and get another type of grant that they don't pay back by calling it, yes, yeah, community development block grant. Thank you, Jenny from the block. <laughs> and so they, they they have thought this out. So please don't think, oh, that, you know, somebody, uh, whoever's listening to this at some point, maybe later on, oh, we're doing, we're doing something bad to them. They can barely make it. Um, COVID 
hurt many, many people in a lot of ways, but then some people were able to come out up out the, the deep and COVID funds were used to get both schools, St. All and Shaw, out of debt. I learned that by the, from the media because she stayed on the news, I know, three or four cycles straight. So um, those are some of the things that we also need to take in consideration on why they want, they're calling it a redevelopment um um plan and that does not mean though you will get affordable housing or what they call affordable that does not mean you'll get low income housing that does not mean um that you can um students will be able to afford the um tuition and to be able to stay there they want to make it like American University and some of these other schools in this in these large, large cities where they share the universe, share the dorm with a possible sexual predator, um, as long as they're registered, or uh, with a possible anybody that's not a student at Shaw. Um, and they say they have ways of securing that. So those are some of the things, like I said, it's so much. A lot of things I say, a lot of things I've said on Twitter, not so much on Facebook. But again, I feel about I feel like a lot of things in history. Um, I was reading how um about Martin Luther King, J. Edgar Hoover, the whole thing was that he they didn't want people to be aware of Martin. Uh, of what he was saying they didn't want to, him to empower people to get people to think differently to think people to feel like they had other options than what they were telling them and that's what this is totally about again is you know and it stays the same that we always bringing these people in if we believe me if we had another state senator other than Abe Jones that was looking over the area that was more radical more progressive more liberal that was re really concerned about Shaw uh, or uh, or um uh Yvonne Holly or, you know, it Shaw should have never gotten to that point or St. All because, you know, and then the Congress people that we had so that covered these areas. So there are many things, many ways. Um, and then also there's been internal things as well. But I just hope this has been an eye opening um, from the past. I don't feel, I think the mistake that people try to do is move forward. And I see a lot of these social justice organizations, too, that come and want to get on the ground and hit the ground and think they know the answer. And then and soon out soon, very soon, they find themselves in um, in a terrible place um, because they don't know the history and then harm is being caused. So um, Rosa wrote some things in um, the um, chat and please read them, Rosa. And then it's someone else that would like to speak. Um, I, I was just saying that um, there is a lot of money. I mean, I'm, I'm not surprised that Shaw hasn't gotten any funding for any of that land. Um, not, It's not as easy to access all of that money. And one of the things about uh, USDA monies that are supposed to go to farmers, especially farmers of color, if, if they're not used, they get recycled back in. And uh, some programs are, are are looking like, you know, 97% of the farmers receiving this, this money are white farmers. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is a battle to get the money that, you know, it goes out there like there's all this money, there's all this thing, but it's not easy to access it and it's not easy for it to get approved. Um, I wrote some grants for Shaw for, you know, agricultural stuff and, and uh, if, if, there, if people are, I mean, it's all, I mean, it, it's, it's by design. None of this is by, you know, just by accident. You know, there's, they're squeezing the lifeblood out of these, these um, spaces for a reason. So yeah, there, there is money out there and there's a lot of money, but <laughs> accessing it. Did they, did they get the grant money when you no. wrote it? No, oh. but the, the next year I submitted the very same one. And um, we got we submitted it through land loss prevention project, and they got it. And right, um, right. and so we kept some we kept 
di di submitting different things, but it's just really, really, I mean, I that's what I do. I mean, I help farmers access these resources mm -hmm. and it's amazing to me how you have to be, um, if you don't know somebody, I mean, I'm only one person. And if you don't know even that one person who can go to bat for you and, and you and right now things are good where if you have a contact in DC and they can move it down the line, you might get approved for even for a loan. Um, black farmers, it's really hard for black farmers to even get approved for loans, much less grants. So um, so it's 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 kind of I was glad to, in a way, kind of to hear you say, you know, the thought is because there's knowledge that there's a lot of money out there, but accessing, there's a lot of money out there, yes, but I'm wondering what's going to happen to that money. It's out there, but the the, the uh, black and brown farmers are not getting it. It's not just going to evaporate. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to go into the hands of white farmers. That's what I think. You know, I'd rather, for, if this fight was about that, hey, Shaw applied for the money and didn't get it, and now they can't make ends meet, that I, I could see that, you know, I could see that. But that's, if you don't apply, um, but when you're connected to Congress people who, when they come, they come to your school to speak, um, you pay them to come and speak, and those people are sitting on these committees and things in, in um 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 they're sitting on these committees um in DC and such or better you know we see people and then there's local money as well. Um there's also your students. Um that's an excellent opportunity to start a forming start back to our roots and our farming program at Shaw. Um back to the SNCC back to the um, 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 you know original dental and other things where people skill work um, in case another COVID come and you lose your job you still have some skills so there's other opportunities that they could have used some of the churches um, some of their students created a whole program um, they get money from Bush for a heart program and other things, um, Clinton Foundation and others, if you go up there and look, um, that could have helped. I'm, I'm not saying I don't have the answers to everything. Another thing they have is a lot of land there to build housing that's just sitting there. Um, but you want to put a, a density on this little bitty piece of something when you can like, whoo, you know, so... I'm gonna let someone else speak. Come on through, Jeremy. Oh no, Jennifer. Jennifer hasn't spoken in a while. Is she still here? Is that Jenny? <laughs> I usually only hear Jennifer, Jennifer when I'm in. I usually only hear Jennifer when I'm in trouble with my mom. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just was. You know, I mean, you're absolutely right. And I think one of the things that a point that I've tried to make a lot is that they are currently able to actually build 12 stories on a huge swath of their downtown property, which is where the dormitories are, which basically stretches from South Street up to Martin Luther King. That is currently zoned for 12 stories. They could go out tomorrow and build whatever they want to build there. And for reference, I believe the public, up at Smoky Hollow, that that development's 12 stories. I think that's on about under three acres. So if you could imagine that size or that density that they could literally put um, on 10 acres of their property right now, you know, there's easy access to an immediate, immediate funding stream right there without um, even going through this rezoning process. They have enough land to create a little mini Black Atlanta, a little, a little Atlanta out there. They have enough to build enough homes, shopping centers, uh, black business, immigrant businesses, um, all of those things. And the you, they won't even like Cameron really said they don't want to have to walk too far from their house. Well, people wouldn't have to walk too far with everything built there. That's how much land they have out there, y'all. Google it and then go look at it. Jeremy. No, see your drones. I'm gonna let Jeremy speak. Jeremy can do these drone pictures of different things 
we need to give him where it is and do let's see what it looks like from a drone view let's hear from you jeremy about that yeah well just tell me where to go and and, and i can do that as long as it's in legal airspace um that yeah i would i would I was just wondering where the city council is as far as the votes on the on the zoning rezoning. Uh, do we have any idea if it's gonna, you know, if it's go, it's the twentieth is the vote, right? So, or so yeah, we it's just Um, well, I know what they asked them to do, and Jim, um, Jane, uh, uh, Jane from District D, even asked Matt Paul to repeat. What are what are we asking? Because there had been confusion, like, oh, I didn't know you said that. I didn't, know, you know, those games. Um, so ask him to repeat it, um, in front of everyone. Um, but my last conversation with um the attorney with the mall, the attorney at the mall, they were still working with um um Dan Blue, the third. Um, on the MOU, but not too much traction had been made, and it was like a day to, uh, I want to say Monday. Um, and as far as had, I don't think y'all have seen any community meetings that talked to us about the master plan. And then they said also meet with the alumni and we know that didn't happen. One other thing I would like to lift here. Uh, that I feel as a, as a, um, as 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 taxpayers, let me put it like that, and voters, we need to pay more attention. Uh, is that when this process started, they kept lifting NC State, the Centennial Campus, right. to say, oh, they didn't do a master plan. They didn't do a master plan. Oh no, well, they just went ahead and said, um. Let's jump into it. You know, they always want to compare themselves to somebody. So one night, just something didn't hit me well. Most people, y'all know, I read to do a lot of research. So I Google. It did not, you can Google now, will not take you long to find that NC State did an extensive, wonderful um, community engagement outreach plan um meetings and oh before before and they, they had the master plan they had with the master plan in hand for people to make comments on the master plan before they even went out there like breaking ground and doing things now i know i heard someone say from the planning department that that didn't happen and we pay them with our tax money i feel like there should be some type of oath those people take if they can't take an oath at least the lawyers who come and represent it really bothers me to know that there are best people regardless of the race but i know predominantly african americans and immigrants and others who have long own land but primarily African and indigenous people. Land have been taken away because the lawyers will go in there and say anything that sounds truthful to the a planning commission. And y'all know they don't have to take an oath. It doesn't, and it doesn't really have to be like the truth. It should be the truth because they're a lawyer, but they can be held accountable by the bar but the city can't find them or say, oh, you told lies or go to tear the house back down because, hey, you took these people land. You know, the, the people, the, whoever they lied for would have to go sue those people. It, it's, it's a bunch of hell for the person that's being um, taken advantage of. And so go back and look at it. You'll hear that their lawyer told lies too, uh, more than one, but especially around that master plan. And then not only that our own mayor, y'all know she lies, and said, no, mm -mm, they did not have the master plan um, before they started. But Google it, you'll see it. And they wanted people involved. I mean, you they even had pictures when you Google it, you'll see the signs that they put out there on the road. And my brother used to live near Western Boulevard before he moved off of Gorman. And now, and then I 
it clicked those what those signs were before Centennial became what Centennial is and it's still growing. So I just want y'all to know that you know if they'll lie and do it for sure. Can you imagine them taking Mr. and Mrs. um uh sister cushion bottom seat um house and they don't really they they have a big developer land attorney for them, but you know they 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 don't know. They, you know, they know what city council is, where you pay your water, or the municipal buildings for that, but all this other stuff, and they can't afford an attorney. We're grateful for uh, uh, attorney Yolanda Taylor, who does community work with us, but I just want y'all to really think about that. Go back and roll the planning commission tapes, videos, well, I said tapes, I'm old school, and, um, and look at and the city council, previous city council meetings, and you're going to hear people who need to be held accountable for telling lies. And it, and let's say the city, um, the city planner, she wasn't for certain. Then she just shouldn't have given a definite answer. So, going on mute for someone else to speak on that. I was just going to add that they, they have added some new conditions as part of their rezoning application, um, but I would say that it's not, I mean, personally, it's not anything that really meaningfully addresses what the concerns are that have been raised over and over again. Um, they One of those conditions that they have community meetings of some type, whether that's virtual or in person or one-on-one uh, -on -one as you know, that as new developments occur, as new plans kind of come together. And that was not my understanding of what the directive was after, at the May 2nd meeting, which was that there be extensive outreach to all of the disparate parties that have been showing up to the meetings in opposition. And as far as I know, uh, that has not happened in any meaningful way whatsoever. And we've been going through this at city council since the beginning of April. So they've had all this time to, you know, reach out to folks, talk to folks, listen to them, incorporate that into what they're asking, and none of that has happened. Rosa, did you hear that? And I know you're very familiar with Black Farmers land being taken away, and can you imagine that something like that is happening right now in our city, maybe because someone is just saying what sounds good to, for the client to win? Yep. Yep. Oh. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and that, that that's the HBCU, but again, um, which has their own attorneys. But again, just think of those who, you know, who cannot afford a lawyer to uh to fight. Um, even today, earlier they had the cases up for uh, what do they call appropriate um appearances and said they have trash and stuff in their backyard and all these things. And I remember when we come living in Raleigh and used to drive by those houses that um, Jesse Ham's own. And um, he had more trash and everything in his yard and it was never touched. There are other entities, nonprofit entities that we know of that look like the houses are in shambles. Mold is growing up in a uh, uh, apartment complex down in Briar Creek looking like a um, jolly green giant. Nobody's bothering them. Um, many other things that are happening, um, depending on who you are, but you'll see they'll start targeting certain areas, um, certain homes to maybe they want them or maybe they're in a, you know, in a way, per, per, a place where they want to bring, uh, bring a, a, a drive, a, 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 a street through like at Heritage Park. They want to, Turn down the four and five bedroom apartments. They do not plan on this. Is this is what they told said in the beginning? They were not planning on rebuilding four and five bedroom family apartments. They were just going to start with three bedroom and go down. So if you have four and five, you know, if you needed that, oh well, I'm not sure where you're supposed to go because this is a decision Raleigh Housing Authority made until Wake County Housing Justice Coalition stepped in, right, Rosa? So it's these decision makers that are at the table. A lot of times, if you're not 
um, like some of the people connected to Dr. Yadid's um, and such, if they're, if they're not vested, I mean, really vested, well, you know, with this as your story read, your story, Rosie, and, you know, not to say, Jeremy, you, your story, you are already vested because read not to put anyone out. Your story, it's, and so how Jenny from the block takes those stories and show and, and let people know how we're all intertwined and, and connected in all these different ways. And it, it just, br- I feel like it brings people together um, in a real, real humanistic a real not only humanistic but spiritual way as well and i just feel like did we need more of this because they're taking it out of the schools people don't know where to get it where it's authentic where it's real where somebody's not you know like a fake reality script show (laughs) so i want to do more things like this we want it to have a big community conversation in-person meeting, but we don't have budgets to rent out city council meeting. I mean, oh, not city council, rent out um the community centers and things like that. Um, and But we don't want to do it on the city dime where the city gets to say and control it. No, um, com- I feel like authentic community engagement comes from the people who are in- from the community. Um, but um, any other things you all like to see our steps from here? I know Juneteenth is coming up, and this, all this history and everything we're talking about goes along with the Juneteenth, and you know how we got there. People didn't even know they were free, um, but they had to have a start getting the word, meaning stories, conversation. They didn't have to do it by Zoom, and so it took some years for them to realize. Hey, guess what? So. Um, we need more of this. It doesn't have to be Juneteenth and it doesn't have to be around a shawl situation. But I am willing and we are a platform here at Wake County Housing Justice Coalition. And we're also doing work on the state level with North Carolina Housing Justice, um, North Carolina Housing Justice for Black and Disenfranchised Lives, because I'd never want to leave out any group. Um and I, I love the way I just saw where Habitat Humanity might be finding their glitch or their own market where they actually are making a way and open it up and really can really serve a group where um, they said where trans people are having an issue finding homes and not feeling safe and and um, or when they go to try to find a home, you know, they're, they're, they're treated unfairly and so they're concentrating on the trans community things like that out of these conversations and uh, other communities that are the youth where do they supposed to go um you you all don't know i realize how many people are sleeping over in the woods in those areas around prince hall but y'all know those apartment complexes have hired their own private security we hear the stories of them being beat up beat down also one other thing i want to lift after they're usually harmed beat down by private security raleigh pd don't even have to really do it as much like that anymore because private security is really harming breaking arms really cause a lot of havoc but um we know the instance that um they broke this young man arm and nose i saw him afterwards and he gave me his testimony but they he was arrested and taken to jail and he moaned all night before he could get to the hospital to you know realize oh these things were broken but after he was done you know he had to go back to jail you know if they catch you sleeping in more square or one of these other parts you know, where our park money going, bond money, tax money is going, they catch you sleeping, um, there's a fine for you to get out of jail now. So all of this has to do with downtown because they don't want people to see us downtown. The mosque served not only the people go over there and pray, they served the community as well. Clothing, prayer, food, They were another resource that was not attached to the government and not attached to strings, and it was pure and authentic. You felt welcome on all levels. 
that's why it's so important not to move that building to create a road for uh, an entertainment center that's already close to Red Hat where they can't even fill up Red Hat. That's what they want to do at Heritage Park, knock down these apartments for four and five four and five bedrooms to put a road through to get to what? This air, Dorothy and Dits, um, um, get to the um what was a plantation. Um and, and then it became a mental health um facility um for people now to go in and have fun at the park. Um, but they want to, you know, get rid of these two buildings uh, with the Western BRT and with this road. So there's mm. so much going on. I'm oh, willing to do this. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go Finish your sentence. Oh, I was going to say, I wanted to say some things too. Oh, about please. It I I wanna... it. No, I mean, I don't have a lot to say, but I mean, I know you all uh, know the community and the history probably better than I do. Um, but what I wanted to do is just talk about this um, approval by the Planning Commission and um, how we, you know, how I feel like the city council should not go with the recommendation by the planning commission. Um, Cause in looking at um, what the planning commission did, I mean, they found that uh, the rezoning request um, was, I guess, consistent with the 2030 comprehension plan, but was inconsistent with the future land use map. And my understanding, you know, just from reading through those documents is that if it's inconsistent, um, you know, um, approval can be reasonable um, if they find that this rezoning is in the public interest. So um, under the public interest part and where they're trying to make their case that this is reasonable because it's in the public interest, uh, they just simply say this request will help a historically black university to expand its programming and facilities such that it can provide more educational, cultural and social opportunities. Um, and first of all, that's not a public, that's Shaw's own interest you know it's a private university so its ability to attract students and you know and programming and all of that to me i don't see how that is for the greater public it may benefit students or future students and shaw shaw's own bottom line but how's that um, um for the greater public interest and then they say we'll allow more space for housing and employment in the area served by transit with goods and services nearby. But of course, their reasonableness um, um, analysis doesn't say anything about affordable housing. Um, they don't know that. Um, so just looking at that, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you know, going to this meeting that's coming up before the city council, um, you know, they're gonna be technical about like these standards, like is it consistent with the comprehension plan for 2030? Um, is it um, consistent with the future land use map? And, the, and, like, and like I'm saying here, the planning commission has already stated that it's not consistent with the um, future land use map, but that um, it's reasonable to approve it because it's in a public interest. And I think all the protests and everything that everyone has you know, shared here this evening and what other folks and other groups are, are, are sharing on Twitter is that this will not be in the public interest. Um, it's in Shaw's interest, right, is my argument. And even though you say it may supply housing, we don't know that. Uh, we, uh, well, I, well, I'm sure there's gonna be luxury housing, let me say that, but we don't know if it will meet the need of this area, which is a need for affordable housing. Um, the other thing I want to say, just by looking at the Planning Commission's analysis, is that um, when they state that the request is inconsistent with the future land use map, um, they feel that you know th their next analysis is would it still benefit? Like I said, would the benefits of the proposed use outweigh the uh, detriments, right? And would the new zoning adversely alter the recommended land use and character of the area? And I think we're saying that yeah, you know, if you were to go for it and build what thirty story buildings, um, you know, more luxury housing because we we can only assume that's what you're building because you haven't said you were building affordable housing that would and could further change the character of the area. 
um, which, you know, um, Shaw has been an anchor institution. And as a result of that, communities have sprung up, sprung up around Shaw, right? And we know that most of these communities have historically been lower wealth and historically, you know, Black communities. And I do know it's a mixed income community now. But for the most part, I think there's an argument that it could, you know, change the character of the area. So for the planning commission to say it will not, I don't know how they get to that conclusion. Um, what else did they say here? Um, they also um, stated, you know, um, the policies that, you know, were consistent. And I think maybe like um, Shaw's attorney or land use zone attorney probably wrote the opinion for the, the, I don't know if they wrote the opinion for the planning commission. I don't know if the planning commission writes their own opinion. The reason why I say that is because a judge usually will ask the attorney who won the case to create the order, right? <laughs> so I don't know, but it sounds like something that, you know, um, Shaw's attorney will argue to try to stretch and show why this is reasonable. Um, they also had this equity and climate change analysis attached, as you know, to the um, rezoning application or, or to the um, decision that was made by the Planning Commission. And um, so they did a housing supply and affordability analysis. And one of the questions was, does the proposal add or subtract from the housing supply? It says adds, but again, we don't have a master plan. So we really don't know, you know, what's going to be built there are how many units, um, but their reason is the request would greatly increase the potential number of housing units that could be built on the site. Excuse me, I got choked. Let me get something to drink. And then under the equity and climate analysis, another question under housing supply was, is nationally occurring affordable housing present on the site? It said, unlikely. It says this site is used for institutional purposes related to Shaw University. Again, we know it's not currently present on the site and it doesn't look like it's in a future plan because it doesn't mention that. And they think, you know, housing will be built. Um, and then it was talking about doesn't include any subsidized units, right? And that um, analysis or this response was perhaps, maybe, perhaps, some students living in and on campus, housing may rely on various forms of financial aid. Okay, well, relying on financial aid is different from whether or not these units are going to be subsidized. Of course, students have financial aid, but what if the financial aid is not enough to cover housing? We already know that we have an issue in this area where students are homeless or students can't find housing. So I don't know how they were able to check that box. So I don't know. I think being able to go through and punch holes in the decision made by the um, planning commission could be a way, hopefully, you know, um, to make a record of, you know, this, you know, this, this, this is in totally inconsistent. There's no reason why you should check. The, they have not checked all their boxes. It would not preserve the character of the neighborhood. How can it be in the public interest if it's really for Shaw to attract more students and, and bring more revenue to their private university? The public interest is housing. And based on the demographics in that community, the public interest is affordable housing, not just luxury housing or any type of housing. Um, so anyway, um, I just wanted to say those things um, and looking at it. And another thing I saw was that um, they stated that um, one of the detriments to uh, this proposal was that, as we know, those historic properties, um, um, they um, they will no longer require, uh, it says the proposed donor will allow historic resources to be modified or removed without receiving a certificate of appropriateness. Um, this increases the likelihood that the historic features of the area will be lost over time. So it's right there in their decision that there's, there's gonna be a huge likelihood that the historic features of this area will be lost over time because they're going around the need for a certificate of appropriateness. And I don't think the developers or Shaw should be allowed to go around that need. Um, in order to do anything to historic property, you first need the certificate of appropriateness in all cases. But, you know, their proposed zone is to allow them to go around it. So I don't know. I'm just looking for, you know, ways again that we can punch holes into the decision made by the Planning Commission. Um, especially um, if the um, 
city is the city council, which hopefully you said the four may not, but especially mm-hmm. if even the other four, whatever the other, you know, Stormy, Branch, the mayor, and who else? Mm-hmm. Oh, Jonathan. Like if they, well, I guess Jonathan, Stormy, and, and Corey, like if they are leading towards, you know, they are. They the are. recommendation. Well, we need to make them, I mean, they're going to have to, uh, re, they're going to have to prove their vote, like support their vote heavily in a public forum, you know, in every which way, if we're able to, again, say they don't have anything to hang their vote on. Um, because it looks what? like the planning commission just hung it on the separate fact that this is in the public interest and it's consistent with the 2030 comprehension plan. Um. I think there's been a lot of inconsistencies pointed out since then, um, and that's why they voted differently when it came to Prince Hall. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, um, Jenny, uh, I'm not sure if you know that they added some pages too um, around that to try to make it look like a master plan. um, Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Jenny just told me, and I was looking through it. I was like, oh, see, the last hour. So where's the community meeting on this then? Huh? So what what they, well, okay, so, so they their attorney added some new conditions uh, to the rezoning application. Yeah. And that mostly centers around, I'm trying to pull it up, I'm sorry. Um, one of the, so the Raleigh Historic Development Commission is a, you know, quasi-judicial council appointed board of volunteers, just like planning commission is. The -hmm. case, of course, came back before them and they produced a 30 page memo, which has all the history of the structures in question, Prince Hall in question, and their recommendations would would have affected about 4% of what Shaw's overall ask was. And that was to, to lower the heights that they were looking for for Leonard and medical Leonard and Tyler Hall parcels, which was 30 stories. They were asking for that. They were asking for them to not do that because that increases the development pressure so much. They asked for all of the historic buildings, um, Tyler Hall, SD, Leonard, Tupper, um, and the Roger Bagley, Daniel Pegues house to be put in easement, a preservation easement held by a qualified nonprofit that takes the future of those properties as precious properties outside of the political sphere and development pressure because they're held, you know, in protection by an easement and they were unwilling to do that. They, um, RHCC tried to kind of extend an olive branch and try to work with Shaw by allowing them to take out the properties in Prince Hall that are not historic. So specifically, that is the daycare center that they have on Lenore Street Mm -hmm. and also uh, an apartment complex that's uh, kind of wraps around um, Lenore Street and Person Street, um, allowing them to take those out of the district, but not the other properties that they were looking to take out. And all of those things Shaw has been unwilling to do. So the only condition that they've added that relates to the historic buildings themselves is that they are they will you know lower the ask back to what the underlying zoning is for the historic buildings Leonard and Tyler in particular at five stories. Um, but other than that, there really is not a whole lot of other you know extensive concessions that they've added. And again, I was trying to pull up those items. Yolanda, your your assessment of everything is absolutely spot on, um, and I appreciate that so much yeah I, I was talking about you earlier and I was like I was like giving your flowers we are grateful to have you because I was saying that you know I'm um, doing the planning commission and doing city council so you can go back and look at some of the lies that you know even their attorney told and even an employee for the city in the planning department um and um our mayor one of the things which was really huge to say that the Centennial Campus did not uh, did not present a master plan first to the community before they started. But it's a simple Google. It ain't even hard. Sometimes I got to Google all night to find stuff. But it's not even a real hard Google. And it's so good that whoever put it in there, they put z- z- what they did. And it, I mean, it was extensive. It, it's stuff that we like to see. And now they have, they reached out to the students. They reached out to the neighbors. Then they reached out to the businesses. And then um, uh, they went over there and did some stuff at the farmer's market, like, like weeks at a time. On the other side 
of a centennial like late boom trail because you know eventually they're going to get there but they you know it was it's fabulous what um i don't have access to a printer and all that but i'm gonna see if i'm find a link and everything sent to you what nc state did around the centennial a mass centennial the centennial campus and that master plan and how they reached out to the community first uh, before they went out there doing things. But you, if you listen to the lies from a lawyer, so my point why I brought you up is that can you imagine a young or older or whomever, just a disenfranchised, a marginalized person who, you know, can't even, don't even understand this terminology, yeah. uh, know what's going on, that have no one to fight for them. I said, I'm grateful we have Yolanda Taylor, mm -hmm. attorney, uh, the esteemed, um, 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 Yolanda, Yolanda Taylor, <laughs> a community who chose, who chose to be a community uh, lawyer and teaches those classes at Wake Forest University, and hopefully more young lawyers and other older, whoever, just would choose to know uh, think about doing those things around rights um, because we need it. Because they told both face lies, but th there's nothing to hold them accountable and to prove it at, 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 in, at the state bar. You know what that's like. So mm -hmm. city, the city has, because as you said, it's, it's not, they're not quasi-judicial, whatever those words, they mm -hmm. don't really truly have to tell the truth. Well, and I think to your point about Centennial, which is a really good point to make, you know, yeah. when you look at the difference of where Centennial is located, that was former farmland that was connected yes. to, for Dorothea Dix. That was where the you know, patients there and stuff grew food and things to support their operations mm -hmm. there. That is, I mean, there are residential areas onto one side of it, but it is largely, you know, kind of out there. It borders I-40, you know, whereas where we're talking about, it touches so many people. Mm -hmm. And as you said, particularly disenfranchised people. And, you know, there is just so much more of a density of community needs that are directly adjacent to this that just mm -hmm. make it so much more important important to have that very careful, you know, campus master plan that really helps guide what happens in the future. This, what they're asking for is just to have a blank check and with absolutely right. no conditions, you know, really attached to it that are meaningful. And that's what's been really distressing. Well, you know, they saw that for a while with the previous uh, city council, we had a few blank checks were given um, quickly and then there were a few um developments that went through um of course david cox voted against those things but there were a few that got through but not not as large as maybe one was as large but um as um what um of what um sh of, of what shaw was trying to do the last one that they were trying to do like that was the one that kane was trying to do out there midtown and by that time it was for election and then the four new city councils came in and next thing you know that was a no 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 so i will also out of this work we do we also need to start looking at and finding these people younger people uh or older people let me stop with the ageism because i'm young okay um to sit on these planning commissions that have these, you know, come from these different backgrounds, but yet understand the terminology. No, maybe you didn't go to MIT and have a degree in uh, urban planning technologically assistance of a something, but you understand. Um, we need to start finding a space. That's why Ella Baker, see Ella Baker having something that y'all would be great to be able to, to, you know, raise the, raise people up or have an opportunity for them, like the school of government, but a school of something around planning and things um, the, and uh, change the electoral power and bring people in on a more social justice um, uh, front. That's the other thing we must do with all of this knowledge that we have. Yep, we have to. Like you say, education is so important and training, like you say, folks to be in this space, uh, regardless, regardless of role, you know, it's, it's definitely important because, um, I mean, they have the big time developer attorneys who are used to having their way and, you know, going in there and getting a bumper stamp. Um, but mm -hmm. 
sounds like you feel or you think that the four other council people um, are not going to move forward. And I hope they know how to, I hope they're not going to be intimidated. Well, that's the thing, because they got tripped with the budget and a lot of things, and that was a closed session. That's another thing we got. To, they don't supposed to vote in a closed session, but I can't do everything. I can't fight all the power that be, Jeremy, yeah. if you want to go down there and get them on that. Um, because um, there was a lot of trickery. There was a lot of things they had up there, like the Fair Housing and Hearing Board to get money and other things. Um, it didn't happen, um, but you know, consultants like Mitch Silver are still up there and getting his six plus figures as a consultant. Um, so that's what worth a lot of the money, um, the budget is so high. These consultants like him and others, um, and you know, so if we, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm willing to work with people who are, uh, you know, want to fight this from a, a real radical sense, but, you know, based on, you know, truth and, and be as harm free as possible. I know there's struggle in the world and there's struggle and people feelings and things get come with it. But as long as we know, you know, you know, in your gut, you know, so that's where I am. I'm so happy to have Jenny from the block on the call this long and give her perspective and the uh, major historian like her, as I was telling them, I want to have other um, classes, teachings, opportunities. Um, uh, we're getting ready to focus on the Heritage Park work in Heritage Park, that redevelopment. Um, and you're going to see how that, you know, goes with Dorothy Yadits and also here. But again, that's the Western BRT, the South Wilmington BRT, and the New Bern BRT. Oh my gosh, y'all are y'all. Ooh, 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 help yeah, I mean, us. You get an opportunity to rest. I know it's like so much is moving at the same time. Heritage Park is moving again. You know, we don't have, we don't even get an opportunity to breathe. It seems like none. That's why I'm hoping that this can be put at bay. Shaw situation can be put at bay, and the thing is, come back with a proficient, real master plan. Um. Uh, if not, we see you in 20, um, 2020, never. Now, and, uh, just to let you know, there's someone, uh, I forgot that guy's name, you know, the doctor guy I told you about who claims that um, yeah. shop is going to maybe open for affordable housing, um, you know, after it's approved. I'm like, but who wants oh, to yeah, get no, that? He wouldn't know. They don't like him. So they don't even let him in the meetings. <sighs> okay, I kind of like thought that but you know but I mean regardless you know I mean who would who would trust that you know okay so let them get through this approval and then trust them to then give us you know the needed affordable housing part of the reason they are not going to show the master plan because you're going to see the plantation owner's name right back on it um who wants and then y'all have some ideal and then their son is now over the north carolina republican um department republican um whatever we call them things um ball call, committees or something uh, yeah. for the state and also um that this they want the, they want that 2.7 percent it's more money it was 2.7 percent they gave them a raise i don't know how much in the budget that they can keep out of the tax money so now they're going to get some of the money laundering mafia money that shaw will be able to decide what to do so every time somebody um uh, at senator yvonne holly go there and get a jamaican you know some jamaican food says the tax 7.5 percent off of 100 you know whatever that comes to 2.7 percent that's what the rate is now i don't know what it is after the budget has been approved um they get to keep it in their social district and decide what to do with it now right now hillsborough street got a major surplus even though they're they pay their executive director that person over the six figures they because nc state NC State does such a great job keeping their school and everything clean. I mean, why did they need a committee? Um, so, you know, the same thing. So that's what's going on over the, with these districts. And she's also the chair. Uh, I mean, 
second chair or set whatever we call vice chair on the downtown alliance. So all these things connect. Yeah, they does. Come here and do a story, uh, 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 show on us or something. Y'all, uh, sometimes you just have to laugh or, or say something like, just not to cry. Yeah, you're so true. So true. But I want to say thank y'all. It is 7.52. I'm going to give y'all a little bit more time for the 8 o'clock hour. Nathan, wait. Nathan, would you like to say anything else? Well, I had a class or something. I don't think he's back. Would you like to say anything, Nathan? I don't have um, any statements prepared. Um, I just want to say all of you have been doing an excellent job keeping on top of this and uh, demanding uh, more from uh the city leaders and from shards as well on this issue and um i'm glad to be here and learn from all of you oh thank you nathan i'm so grateful nathan Wad, all the other younger just a few years younger than me give me so much hope and i remember when i was younger came here and i would go hear uh, miss murray um and um of the elders, um, um, Mr. Worth and the Bakers and um, Miss Octavia and others go to these meetings and hear. And I was like, man, I want to be like them one day. I didn't even know what I was talking about. I should have been saying something else, maybe. Um, but, you know, I know this is where I'm supposed to be. I'm grateful to have y'all here. I will let y'all know what else we have planned. I wish more people would have came, but they didn't. But you know what? It's just like church. They'll be able to hear it somewhere. There is a recording. It This will go down in history in and in the clerk's office. I'm going to make sure uh, it's not removed out of a safe or, throw, or found in somebody's bathroom later on. So um, thank you all. I look forward to seeing you in person. We are going to have a Juneteenth event. Um, I will send you the information as soon as I get the yes for the building. Okay, right, sounds good. Thank you. Love, love. Thanks, uh, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Night, Thanks. Bye -bye. And uh, we do need members of people that haven't left yet. Mm -hmm. We are taking key members, but... Thank you, Yolanda. I have forgot what I was talking about you. I forgot you had said you were coming, but that is so <laughs> fine. Um, I'm so glad Jeremy and Red are over here. I think you've yeah. met them, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I believe so I've met Yolanda, right? I think so, too. Um, I'm I'll was turn it? my camera on for a second so you can see. I don't know, but I was just ooh, 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 Let me you put on my familiar? sunglasses. I wear my Yeah, you look familiar. Sunglasses. I think I met you, Jeremy. So, uh, yeah. I've been, I've spoken at uh, countless meetings and all that. So it probably yeah, seen me that's there. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah. I up. can sing uh, too. What? Yolanda's husband is a, this fabulous drummer. And I, so I was letting her know that you can sing as well. Oh, and oh yeah, he's yeah. a singer too. He has a new song that's about to Okay, come your out. husband can't sing. I apologize. I <laughs> that's don't okay. Want to the way. He, yeah, he has an album, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he has a new one that's more like hip that's coming out soon. So he's going oh, okay, to that. So I, I'll let y'all know. I let y'all. Yeah, I want to get my knee right. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet so, you. Uh, nice to meet you again, Jeremy. Oh, nice to meet you too. Uh, maybe I could sign up Jen Tree Fire again. Um, no, I'm like, who is that? And next time she just needs to stand. I guess she was too ashamed to stand up that night. <laughs> yeah, everybody was looking yeah, like, who the heck is that? Feel bad. Like, <laughs> probably thought she's gonna be kind, Jen, Jen Tree Fire. Be kind. And so I, I can't believe she saw She said, she, not only she said it like twice. <laughs> Two times. Why? Oh, you mean when she came back before she left? Yeah, she 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 uh she read the people that didn't show up, and you know 